A Harvard professor has just found a piece of rock potentially from interstellar space. That's rock from outside of our solar system. He searched the ocean floor just to get to it, but that's not all. The bizarre part is that there's a chance the finding could be some remnant part of alien artifact. But is it legit? The US Space Command seems to think so. So what exactly did he find? Let's find out. Hey Space Cats, I'm Dr. Maggie Liu and today we're talking about Cineos 2014-0108, Interstellar Meteorites and Alien Traces. So let's begin. In 2017, a mysterious object estimated to be up to a thousand meters long entered our solar system. Named Oumuamua, this visitor became the first ever detection of an interstellar object, an object to have originated from outside of our solar system. It was thought to have formed in the same way as asteroids and comets in our own solar system, but are ejected from their home star systems by things like collisions or other big events. At the time, some scientists even believed it to be an alien spacecraft due to its unusual cigar-like shape and trajectory being like no other asteroid or comet that has ever been observed in our own solar system. It also accelerated slightly as it passed through our solar system, which is something that is not typically seen in natural objects. Just over a year later, a second interstellar object was spotted, Comet Borisov, which was unlike any other comet that has ever been observed before. It was highly eccentric, so it had this very elliptical orbit, traveling at a speed that pointed at an origin in another star system. Interstellar objects must be more common than we think, and maybe they're already crash-landed here on Earth. We just have to find them. That's exactly the thought process of a team of scientists led by R.V. Loeb, an astrophysicist at Harvard University. The Galileo project consists of over 70 members, including everything from geochemists to cosmochemists, and aims to search for extraterrestrial technological signatures of extraterrestrial technological civilizations through methods including the study of interstellar objects. In 2014, a meteoroid entered Earth's atmosphere and exploded over the Pacific Ocean. The object, which was later named Cineos 2014-0108, was traveling at an extremely high speed of 42.1 plus or minus 5.5 kilometers per second. This led astronomers to believe that it may have originated from outside of our solar system. The US Department of Defense verified in a letter that the velocity estimate reported is sufficiently accurate to indicate an interstellar trajectory. They were 99.99999% certain. But only just recently, with some generous donation, RV and his team have managed to track down the path of the object, which they call Interstellar Meteor 1, or IM1 for short. It was located 85 kilometers off the coast of Manus Island in Papua New Guinea and they scoured the bottom of the ocean two kilometers below the surface over a 10 kilometer wide area with a magnetic sled that they pulled to try and pick up fragments of IM-1. Unfortunately, they had no luck. The magnets kept coming back covered in black volcanic ash. And no surprise there, really, because if the meteorite was down there, it's been over a decade. Whilst almost losing hope, they decided to sieve through this black volcanic ash. And it's quite fortunate that they did, because otherwise they would not have found the tiny fragments of iron just millimeters in size. On analysis of these spherical fragments, it seems that they are about 90% iron, 10% magnesium and titanium. These fragments are way too small and have too much iron content to have come from any comet or asteroid. They are much stronger than we know of and are not like any of our human-made alloys. And whilst it is possible for humans to make something similar, and whilst it is possible for humans to make something similar, it would be extremely rare for them to do so, and even more so to be found at the bottom of the Pacific Ocean. The melting point of titanium is about 1,700 degrees Celsius, and magnesium about 1,000 degrees Celsius. So it's very unlikely that these spheres would have naturally formed either. 
This in conjunction with the bizarre structure of these spheres, essentially they're spheres within spheres. This led Arvi and his team to think that this could be alien technology. The discovery of these fragments is exciting because it provides the first concrete evidence that an interstellar object has ever collided with Earth. It also raises the possibility that other interstellar objects may have made it into our planet but have not yet been found. They could be all over the place. Statistically speaking, there could be millions of interstellar objects just like IM1 right now within the orbit of the Earth around the Sun. This means that for every asteroid or comet that we see in our solar system, there could be up to a million interstellar objects that we cannot see because they're too dark to be detected by even our best telescopes. They reflect so little sunlight that they blend right in with the background noise of the night sky. Despite the support by the US Space Command, not everyone is convinced that the meteoroid is even interstellar in origin. Some astronomers have published a paper stating that the government data must be wrong. And this is because their model for solar system rocks could not fit the government's data. The meteor speed must have been much smaller or could possibly not be made of iron at all. Further study of the fragments definitely is needed to confirm their interstellar origin. And whether or not it is alien technology. However, the discovery of these fragments is a major step towards understanding of our universe and our place in it. It's possible that these fragments contain clues about the formation and evolution of other solar systems, and even about the possibility of extraterrestrial life. Arvi and the Galileo team are expected to take another expedition in spring 2024 to try and recover a larger relic of IM1. And you can follow his blog posts, which I'll link down below to keep you updated on the progress. That's all for this week's video. If you enjoyed it, please don't forget to leave me a like, share and subscribe.